Hello and welcome. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to come back onto the lipos, the Traxxas lipos. How good are they? How do they hold up over a period of time? We have two brand new ones, well they've been used once. We've got a couple of used ones which have been used probably 40 to 50 times. And when we have an old one here which actually wouldn't charge originally, it had gone low voltage. We managed to recover it on this charger here, which is something I'll come on to on another video. But we're gonna charge them up on the Traxxas charger. We'll use a dual function. Charge them up on that, see what they come up to. And then we will discharge them on this, using the discharge bank at 20 amps, and then see what the performance is. All batteries over a period of time will deteriorate in performance, whether it's small batteries like this, whether it's in an EV, they will all deteriorate, but how quickly they deteriorate is, is something of a myth sometimes. In my opinion, the lithium polymers, they do tend to stay at a very good performance for quite a while, particularly in these ones which we're not using perhaps as regularly as you would on some perhaps race packs when you're racing week in, week out. But we'll see how they perform. One of the other things which we'll try on this charger is the internal resistance. That's a good clue as to when the battery is starting to lose performance. The internal resistance is how quickly or how quickly it can deliver the power from the battery. So a lower internal resistance will give you more punch when you accelerate away. One of the things you see I haven't done these, I haven't marked these batteries, which is something I will do between this video and when we, when we come to the discharge point, I'm gonna mark them up A, B, C, D, E, so we know which battery is which. Always a good idea, um, whether it's with a marker pen, a label or something like that. And then we're gonna just record the results in this little table here, just so we know what the capacity is and so on, so we can do a like for like comparison. If you really wanted to, you can date this, you can compare them month on month. If you store a battery for a long while, has that affected the performance? One of the things you will notice with all these lipos, the, the devil, shall we say, there's no swelling on them. That is the main, main indicator. If you've got swelling on a battery, i.e. it started to puff or swell, that means it really has seen better days. I would not use them at all. So we're gonna charge this battery up on the Traxxas charger. We are going to use the 8 amp dual function. We'll start that off. That will then go into a lipo sack as soon as we come off camera and we'll see how this goes. There's going to be quite a lot of um, time just doing this today but so obviously I'll cut the video so it makes it quite concise and, and very short but that is what my day is going to be today. Charging them up, discharging them, seeing what they, uh, how they perform, see what the new is, what the use is like and the one that was well, purchased as a won't charge, um, quite cheap one actually. We'll see how that performs, would be quite interesting. Okay, so the first pack has now charged up. We are going to put it on the eye charger now to see what it does. As you can see, it's in this LiPo bag, but I'm just gonna move it just to make things a little bit clearer. We've got the discharge bank hooked up, which is where we'll discharge through just to save putting too much heat through the eye charger. So from previous videos, you may remember that we had cell three tended to read a little bit low and it has done that again. It's 4.19, the others are 4.2. So that does seem a feature of this charger that it does read a little bit low. It doesn't put quite as much into that cell three, but it's only a small amount. So we're gonna discharge this 20 amps. This is set up to charge, discharge it slightly higher so I'm just going to wind that back to 20. Three point five volts per cell cut off and we'll see what that does. While that is doing that I am going to put another battery on charge so we will put a second one of these on charge. So that's pack A which we will label up. 4700 milliamps that's pretty good. One of the things I did forget to measure after it had been charged was the internal resistance. So we will perhaps do a, another charge on that one a little bit later. But what I'm gonna do, got the table here, I'm just gonna put in the figures so we can compare. You can always obviously compare these, come back to them later, see where we're at. As I say, I forgot to do the internal resistance, so we'll see what that does. One of the things obviously we must remember to do is put these packs back into a storage state because they're very low voltage or quite low voltage at the moment once you've discharged them. So off camera, I will put these back into a storage state so that we don't have any issues in the future. Pack 
pack B. Pack B is now charged. One of the things you will notice in here, when it gets to nearer the top parts of the LEDs, it does seem to take a bit longer. That's when it's actually balancing. That's when it's putting the small amount of current to get each up to 4.2 volts. Now, ironically, this one's a little bit lower. 4.19, 4.18, 4.18. But again, the, the third cell is lower than the rest. So that must be a feature of the charger. What we will also do, which I forgot to do last time, is just get the internal resistance and that gives me 8.4 so we'll just enter that and internal resistance is a good measure when your internal resistance goes up in a pack generally that does mean it is starting to um, deteriorate not necessarily going to fail but it certainly will notice a difference in performance so let's discharge this one see what we've got and why this is going i'll put the next one on charge so pack b has now discharged and we've got 4,876, fraction more than what we had in pack A. Discharge it down 20 amps to 3.5 volts. We'll now just wait for the next pack to charge and see what that does. So pack C is now charged. Voltage again, 4.19, 4.19, 4.17. Cell three, as we expected, is slightly lower. Just see what the internal resistance is like on this pack. So pack C is discharged and we've got 4881. So we'll enter that on here. So now pack D has finished charging. Same as the others, eight amps. Because it helps me plug it in the right way around. You can't plug these in the wrong way around, but I had a good go. Pack D. Again, cell three is a fraction lower than the rest, but not too much. They're all pretty much of a muchness. What's the internal resistance? 10.8. Each cell is quite consistent, but that does seem that that pack won't have as much punch as the other ones. Let's discharge it and see what figures we get out of it. Finally, the last pack we're going to charge up. Now this is the one which we had issues with. It was originally low voltage. So I'm going to keep a close eye on this when I'm charging it up. We'll do exactly the same as we did with the others though. Eight amps on the balance charge. Let's see what it does. So pack D has now discharged and that's given us 4744. So again, not too dissimilar they're all around about the four seven four eight but crucially it did have that higher internal resistance right so this is pack e which we've now charged voltages all look okay 4.2 4.19 4.19 let's see what the internal resistance on these is like just takes a moment just for it to come through that's 19.9 so that is higher again that's the highest that we've come in at We'll enter them on our sheet here. So pack E has now discharged and unsurprisingly, it's not given us quite the same figures. 4167. So it's nearly seven, 800 milliamps less than the good packs. So resurrecting a dead pack only has very limited uh, results. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to charge up the first pack again because we forgot to take the internal resistance on that. So I'm just going to charge that up, get the internal resistance, and then we can complete our table. So we're back with the first pack, which we forgot to check the internal resistance on. Charged it on the Traxxas charger. Uh, again, cell three. Actually, fact, they're all almost even this time, so I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Internal resistance is going to come up now. And overall, it is 10.2. So that's slightly high. Now, what it does tell me is 
I said earlier in the, in the uh, video, always label up your lipos. Now what I've realized what's happened is I said this was a new pack. In fact, I've got this mixed up. This is actually a used pack and I can tell that by the serial numbers on there. The serial numbers actually rubbed off on this one. So I know this isn't a new pack, it's just for use. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna amend these figures on the spreadsheet. Pack A is actually going to move as a used pack and pack B and C are both new packs. So we'll just adjust that. And then here you can see we've got the correct figures. So that's the end of the test that we've done. So the big question is what, is it worth buying a used LiPo? Well, firstly, if you've got someone saying they can't get one to charge, unless you really know what you're doing, I wouldn't bother. It's a false economy. You're not gonna get the performance. Ones that have been used, as we can see from the figures, the thing that seems to decrease or increase is the internal resistance. The higher the internal resistance, the, the lower the performance of the pack, it won't give you that punch. And you wanna try and match the batteries as well as best you can. So I'll always be using A and B because they've got roughly similar figures and C and D. If you mix them, you'll actually pull more current out of the better battery and you'll, you'll ruin it quicker, shall we say. So I think if you can get a used battery at a good price, there's no signs of swelling. If there's any signs of swelling, don't buy it. People shouldn't be selling them anyway. And if you can confirm that they have always kept them in the storage charge, which is the 3.85 volts per cell, you know they've been well looked after. But at the end of the day, it's worth spending a decent amount of money on LiPos. In another video, I'm gonna come on some cheaper LiPos that I've got, which even is brand new, they don't perform as well as these used Traxxas. So I hope that's a little bit of uh, information, a little bit of a guide for you. If there's anything else you wanna know on the LiPos, just uh, leave a message and we can do a special video on it. Thank you.